All right, so here we're on our Proving Identities worksheet. We're on number 31. And in this one here, this one looks pretty complicated. I do have some of the identities here on the right. So let's take a look at this. Uh, some different things we can do. We can perform the indicated operation here by getting a common denominator. Um, we could turn things into sine and cos and see what happens there. I think that would be interesting because cotan and cosecant, uh, there would be a lot of sine and cos involved with that. So I think we're going to try that. So cosecant is 1 over sine theta minus sine theta. And cotan is, well, that's cos over sine, isn't it? Cos theta over sine theta. All right, minus cotan is cos theta over sine theta over cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay, now that looks like it makes things a lot more difficult, but let's let's uh, take one piece at a time. So let's focus on this numerator over here, okay? Let's perform the indicated operations. Let's do 1 over sine. Let's do, um, let's make this sine theta over sine squared theta, okay? Or do I want to do that? Sine theta. That's over 1, so sorry, sine squared. Uh, that's my bad. Let me start again. So we're gonna, this is over 1 right now, so we're going to make this over sine theta, and I'm going to put a sine squared on top. Okay, so it's sine squared theta over sine theta. Now, what we can do is rewrite that as 1 minus sine squared theta, okay, over sine theta on top. And then when we divide by, let's see, look at the bottom here now. When we divide by a fraction, it's like flipping and multiplying. So really, this is like times sine theta over cos, right? That's what, that, this, that's what this first part is. So we're going to write that there. I can leave that there. Uh, when we divide by 1 over sine, it's like multiplying by sine. So over here is cos theta over sine theta times sine theta. All right, so we've kind of dealt with these fractions a little bit. So now what I see is I've got a sine theta and a sine theta. They're both factors, top and bottom. Can uh, divide those out, and as well over here. Okay, so I've so now what I have, what do I have? I have one minus sine squared theta over cos theta. Beautiful. Over here, I've got minus just plain old cos theta. Okay. Now, if I wanted to combine those two, right, if I wanted to combine those two, and, and again, we're looking to see if this equals zero, right? We're proving this side equals zero. So is there a way that I can, you know, get this thing to equal this thing now, really, because we're subtracting. So what I want to do is I want to put this cos squared over cos here, and I can combine these two terms. So, or actually, I don't want to combine them yet. But cos squared, how can you rewrite cos squared? Well, if you look over here, uh, where am I? So cos squared, right, is 1 minus sine squared. So this is 1 minus sine squared theta over cos. And this is 1 minus sine squared theta over cos. So you have a quantity minus itself now. And that equals 0, and that's good enough. And say you're done there. So if you can show that you're taking, uh, you have a quantity minus itself, that equals zero, and that's good enough. If you want to combine these into one, you could. You could have one minus sine squared theta minus one minus sine squared theta, which would end up to be zero over cos, which is zero.